Uh, I thank God, my Savior, and my Lord Jesus Christ for giving me this time. I am alive. Every day of my life, I don't take anything for granted. The fact that this morning I woke up, I thank God for that. And I hope you are also going to be very grateful that you are alive. The fact that you can still be breathing, it's a sign that God loves you. As I always say, you go to the hospital, someone is breathing using respiratory systems which are designed by doctors. But you can breathe. Someone is grasping just for oxygen. Someone cannot even drink just water. You are having it. So thank God for that. Someone is not even eating food, but you are eating. Thank God for that. Someone is not even driving. They don't even have sight. They can't hear. They can't smell. But you have them. Thank God for that. So now, today I want to show you something again from the Word of God. Concerning the accuracy of the Word of God. I have told you that in these last days, Satan is attacking the Word of God using people who are holding the Bible, so-called pastors. Those are the people who are attacking the Word of God. It is my honest confession that today a drunkard is one of the most soberest people when it comes to disturbing the Word of God. A typical drunkard, a typical prostitute, a typical sinner is the easiest person to convert to the Word of God. The people who are destroying the Word of God are people who are carrying Bibles. How are they doing it? Through twisted preaching. Twisting the Word of God. Giving a false word, reading scripture but twisting it in interpretation. So now, this Sunday, I want to deal with an issue which is rampant in the whole world. I want to ask you a question. Did God create certain people for hell? Does God get pleasure in seeing people dying and going to hell? There are people who are teaching that God is pleased by taking people and taking them to hell. Does the Bible teach that God created certain people for hell? Now, let us not argue. Let us visit scripture. And as we visit scripture, let us not forget that I am talking about people created for hell or for heaven. Did God create people for hell? Let us look at the scriptures. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. The book of Matthew. I will read. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And said, this is Jesus. Verily, I say to you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I will read again. And Jesus said, I say to you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Here is my case. How many times have you heard 
people saying God has hidden the gospel from certain people because he does not want to save them. God has hidden the gospel from certain people. Why? Because he does not want to save them. Is that true? You know the scripture they quote? They quote a scripture where Jesus says, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise, from the educated, and you have revealed them to children or to babes. Now here where we read in Matthew chapter 18 verse 3, Jesus is making a blanket statement that says, unless you are converted and you repent and you become like children, you are not going to be saved. Now, here is my point. If Jesus prayed and said, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the educated, you have hidden these things from the wise, but you have revealed it to you have revealed them to little children. Was he saying there are people he does not want to save? The answer is a big no. Why? In Matthew 18, verse 3, he says to his hearers, unless you are converted and you become like little children, you are not going to be saved. So in other words, everyone was supposed to be converted and have an attitude of a child. That is the reason why when you look at the disciples, they wanted to chase away the children. And then Jesus said, let the children come to me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Why? The simplicity of a child. So now, when someone comes to you and says, God does not want to save certain people because he hid the gospel. Jesus prayed and said, Father, I thank you that you have revealed it to the simple. Don't you see that it's a twisting of scripture? Lack of understanding. Do you know what they go on to say? They say, God has hidden the gospel from certain people. He hides it from people because he does not want to save them. I want to ask you a question. Where in the Bible does it say God hides things from people? Because he does not want to save them. There is no such a verse. Why? The Bible says God wants all men to be saved. Can I show you something? Who hides the word? Second Corinthians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the second letter, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Who hides the gospel so that people are not saved? Is it God? No. God does not hide the gospel. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I will begin reading from verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yes, it is very true that the gospel is hidden from certain people. Who hides the gospel? The one who hides the gospel is not God. Who hides it? Verse 4. Okay, let me, tell, start, let me read again verse 3 and 4 as 1. But if our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest or lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. First Corinthians 
chapter 4. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan is the one who hides the gospel. When a preacher comes to you and tells you that God is the one who hides the gospel, he is deceiving you. Why? God wants everyone to be saved. The person who hides the gospel so that people cannot be saved is the devil, not Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. I will read again so that I can show you why the gospel is hidden. It is not hidden because God does not want to save people. That is the opposite. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Again, I will read until it sinks. Listen to this. If our gospel be hid, it is hidden to them that are lost. We agree that the gospel is hidden. Who hides the gospel? Verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Who is the God of this world? Is it Jesus? No! It is the devil. So it is not true to propagate a gospel which says God hides the gospel from certain people because he doesn't want them to be saved. That's from the devil. God wants everyone to be saved. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. God wants everyone. I underline the word everyone to be saved. Second Peter chapter 3. I'll give you the verse. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Listen to this. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us what, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish. Underline the word any should perish. Any should perish. And then he says, he wants all to come to repentance. Show me from the Bible where it says God has hidden the gospel from certain people because he wants to take them to hell. There is no such a verse. But do you know what? You hear people saying, the gospel is hidden. Why? God has the gospel from certain people because he doesn't want to serve them. It glorifies him to see people going to hell. God being glorified by people going to hell. Which God are you talking about? The God of the Bible does not want anyone to die and go to hell. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. God is not glorified when you see someone dying and going to hell. One person. Ezekiel chapter 18. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18. God is not glorified by the death of one sinner. One. Ezekiel 18. Verse 20. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Or verse 20. The soul that sins, it shall die. 
the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn away from all his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Read and read and read the verse 24, verse 25. You see, God is not pleased with the death of the wicked. So God is not happy when a wicked person dies. Now, this portion of scripture where I read shows us something that a wicked person can turn to righteousness and be saved. And a righteous person can turn to wickedness and they can perish. What does that show you? It shows you that a person can turn from, from righteousness to wickedness and lose their soul. Verse 20, I'll read again. Verse 20. But, verse 21, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Do you want to live? Turn away from wickedness. Turn away from fornication. Turn away from adultery. Turn away from drunkenness. Turn away from all forms of wickedness. You are going to live. And then verse, part B of verse 21. But he shall surely live if he turns from wickedness to righteousness. Verse 22. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness, what he has done, he shall live. Verse 23. If I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die. So you tell me that God created certain people for hell. Here the Bible is putting it so simple and straightforward. God has no pleasure in the death of a wicked person. God has no pleasure in the death of a sinner. So never entertain this satanic gospel which says that God created certain people for hell. It's not in the scriptures. Let us continue. Let us go on. You know, there are people which when you disagree with on a certain doctrine, you just disagree with them on something, they quickly say, you are not saved. You are not saved. Here is my case. Ezekiel 18, verse 23. God is not pleased with the wicked dying in sin. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. We saw that God is not slack concerning his promises, but he is patient, waiting for everyone to repent. So it is God's desire that every human being must repent. Oh, you mean to tell me that everyone is going to heaven? That is not what I, I didn't say that. I said God wants everyone to repent. Let me ask you a simple question, which I am going to answer from scripture. What or who was hell created for? When God created hell, was he creating it for human beings? Matthew chapter 25. Let us go to Matthew 25. Who and why was hell created for? Matthew chapter 25. Hell was not created for human beings. It was created for Satan and his demons. Verse 41. Matthew 25, 
25 verse 41 did God create hell for men the answer is a big no hell was not created for any human being one single human being was not created for hell what was hell created for Matthew 25 verse 41 then shall he say also to them on the left hand depart from me you cast into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels what was hell prepared for for the devil and his angels what was hell prepared for Matthew 25 verse 41 for the devil and his angels does it say depart from me you workers of iniquity and go to hell prepared for Satan his angels and human beings who disobeyed no only two classes of species Satan and his demons not any human being so hell was not created for any human being so you mean to tell me that people are going to go to heaven all of them that's not what I said you decide on your own when you want to go to heaven that God I want Jesus save me yes you decide for yourself if the Holy Spirit convicts you you see Jesus said it is good that I go away and then after I am gone I am going to send another he will convict the world of sin so every human being is going to be convicted by the Holy Spirit after conviction are you going to say yes Lord or no do you know in my country there is a song which says the heavens declare the greatness of God on judgment day not even one single person is going to say I never heard the gospel why in Psalms 19 the Bible says even the heavens they speak a voice which is which trans transcends every nation every language every barrier a person who is in the thickets of Pakistani the thickets of Honolulu the thickets of Zimbabwe or South Africa or Australia with the kangaroos and they have never seen the Bible the Holy Spirit will convict them using the heavens why the heavens declare the glory of God that is when, why when you read in Romans chapter 1 from verse 19 the Bible says no man is going to have an excuse because after they have seen the greatness of the God after they were convicted in their hearts they became hard-hearted God gave them up to evil ways so what am I trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you that every human being will hear the gospel and it will be their decision to say yes or no the Bible says behold I said before you life and death therefore choose life it is your choice there are people who are going to go to hell because they rejected Jesus not because God wanted them to go to hell why because he doesn't want any man to perish we saw that in second Peter chapter 3 verse 8 let us continue let us continue let us continue reading our scriptures Romans chapter 13 verse 11 Romans chapter 13 verse 11 I want to answer a question which many people don't understand and the question has got an answer which is from the scriptures Matthew chapter 13 verse 11 you hear people saying once saved always saved you cannot lose your salvation that's from the pit of hell you know why people don't understand this concept they don't understand the three things about salvation 
Let me try to be simple. I will just be out of topic for some few seconds or minutes. You see, when we talk of salvation, remember this, that salvation is in three tenses. Past, present, and future. Justification, sanctification, and glorification. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, or forever. So now, when people look at the scriptures, they don't understand that when you are saved, for example, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, Paul says, For we are saved by God's grace, not our works. So, we are saved is past. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, he says, We are being saved. What are we being saved from? We are being saved from temptation. I am a man. Let me tell you the truth about me as a man. As I go around, as I walk around on earth, I am not yet there in mind as far as my body is concerned. I need to be saved from some things which I see on a daily basis. Do you mean to tell me, you as a man, you are totally free from your body? You see something which arouses your manhood. You just say, oh, I am saved. I am dead to sin. Things don't work like that. When we are still on earth, our bodies are not yet glorified. I am not saying this so that I can say you can go and sin and sleep with a woman. I'm not talking about that. I'm just trying to show you that the nature of sin is still pestering us. Our bodies still last after women as men. As women, your body still lasts after men as a woman. As a teenage, you will feel that or you will sense that your body wants to have sexual contact with someone. Why? Your body is still not glorified. You have been justified by faith. You need sanctification. And then after death, there is something which is called glorification which will come when your body put on the new man. That is the reason why we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you read from verse 50, it says, In the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. But before that comes, we are in a world where we see nude pictures, where we see naked women, where we see dirty material as we all go around. And those things, they defy even sometimes the way we think and they disturb us as Christians. And as Christians, we have power to overcome them. But God saves us on a daily basis. I showed you that we are saved. We are being saved and we shall be saved. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14. I want to show you something. The Ephesians 1 verse 14. Okay, let me start from verse 13. Jesus, this is Jesus. Paul is talking to the Corinthians, to the Ephesians. In whom also you have trusted, that is Jesus, after you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. So the purchased possession, which is you and me, we are not yet redeemed. This is the reason why when you read Romans 8, verse 22, 23, the Bible says, this immortality or this body, which is weak, is going to be what? transformed after death. So your body has not yet been purchased completely. You walk in a world where there is lust. You walk in a world where if you spend days without having your partner, if you are married, you know what I am talking about. Why our bodies still need to be saved. 
That's why you see that you need to be saved from temptation. That's why you hear Jesus saying, Deliver us. When you pray, pray this way. Our Father in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And then he goes on to say, Deliver us from temptation. Save us from temptation. You are not yet saved from the temptation which is coming tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, something is waiting for you. God will save you from that temptation. So what saved, all you saved, does not work in that way. You can lose your salvation. We saw the other day that in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 15, there are women who are defined as loose women who left their first love and they went after Satan and they were saved. Why? They were widows. They were living with a man and the man died and then after died, after he died, they could not have sexual, a sexual partner and because of lust, they fell. That's the Bible. Last verse. Two Chronicles, chapter 15. Two Chronicles. This is the Old Testament. You cannot lose your salvation. God will be with you even to the end. Let's hear what Second Chronicles says. Chapter 15. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear you me, Asa, and all you Judah of Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. The Lord is with you while you be with him. In my language, we say, What does that mean? The Lord be with you while you be with him. Let's continue reading. This is exciting. Verse 2. The Lord be with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Is it true that if you forsake God, he will forsake you? Do you mean to tell me that you can jump into bed with someone's wife and call yourself a Christian? Why? Second Chronicles chapter 15. God is with you if you are with him. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. You go after prostitutes like Solomon, you lose your salvation. If you don't repent. Do you know that David went with someone's wife and then he said, Restore to me the joy of salvation. Oh, Father, I have sinned before you. What did he do? He repented. What do you need to do? You need to repent and turn away from your iniquities. You cannot say, I have repented, and you continue sinning. It does not work that way. What am I trying to show you? I'm just trying to show you that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hebrews 5 verse 8. I'm done. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Hebrews 5 8. This is, is, this is Jesus being referred. Though he were a son, yet lend he obedience by the things which he suffered. There are people who confuse obedience and works. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. Yes, we are saved by grace, but there is something which is called obedience. After you have been saved by grace, there is obedience. Do you know what grace is? Let me try just to explain what grace is. The Bible says we are co-workers with God or 
we are God's building. Our bodies are the temple of Christ. So now, in a building, you need a foundation. So grace is the foundation, and the foundation is Jesus. But you need windows in a building, the superstructure of the building. And the superstructure of the building is not the foundation. Works. This is what I'm trying to show you in, in, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. I'll read again. Though he were a son, yet he lent obedience by the things which he suffered. So Jesus suffered. Verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. You mean to tell me you are obeying God when you are living in sin? Who is going to be saved? The author of eternal salvation. Those who obey him. Do you mean to tell me that you obey Christ when you are living in sin? Fighting. Fornicating. Being a thug. Stealing. And you say, I'm a child of God. Cheating people. Hebrews 5 verse 9. Jesus became perfect and became the author of eternal salvation to those who obey him. Salvation is for those who obey Jesus. Amen.